Did you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, welcome. Uh, my name is Jette. I'm the director of the studio arts programs at Medafra. And with me is Michael, Michael Lawton. He's a, a, a teacher on the course, a tutor. He's going to be speaking a little bit about his experience and what a tutor is, etc. Um, I'll be running over some of the very basics uh, of the course, of the course structure. Um, the, the session today is going to be about 15 minutes of me explaining the, the basics and then Michael will, will talk a little bit and we will be joined in the session by Zoe, who is a current student on the course, and she will be talking a little bit about her experience. And then if you have questions, etc., you can either do them in this session or uh, we can contact uh, afterwards via email or in an in individual Zoom. Uh, calls. So uh, let me just uh, basically start the presentation uh, with a picture of our big patio uh, here in Barcelona. Uh, you probably already visited our website and I think that one of the most um, spectacular parts of Metaphor is probably the space. There aren't very, very many of those spaces left in Barcelona. And we feel incredibly privileged to, to inhabit it. Uh, on the other hand, it has to say, be said that it's, it's hot in the summer and it's cold in the winter and it has its things, but uh, it's an ideal place for an art school like ours. So this is our back entrance. Uh, what I want to talk about, let me just get this out of the way. Um, what I want to talk about is of course the, the, the training program in studio arts. It's a three year training program. Uh, we're an independent institution, meaning that we're not part of the university. Uh, we're multidisciplinary. Uh, we don't specialize in any uh, discipline, any art disciplines. Uh, and we teach entirely in English on the training, uh, on the studio arts program, because we have another department at Medafra, which is called the art therapy department where some courses are taught in, uh, in Spanish. Um, okay. Right, the structure of the program. So we, um, we, we are a small school. Uh, all in all, between the three years, we have around 45 students, 45, 46, 47. Uh, and most of the time we organize them in pretty small groups. So uh, the, the general student experience will be that of a small group of five to 10 students. Everyone knows each other. And so it's very kind of intimate. Um, each year can be taken independently. So that means that you can do the first year, the foundation program, get an independent title for that. Second year is the certificate in studio arts. You can do it, you get an independent title for that. And the third year is the diploma in studio arts. So um, we have designed this uh, system basically so that students can enter the program according to the level uh, that they're at and leave when they want and need to. Uh, so uh, it's not everyone who does the three-year program. Uh, some students do one year, some students even do a, a, a short stay of six weeks. Um, the different levels, the three different levels. Uh, so who can apply? Uh, the foundation program uh, is uh, for students who have a high school level in arts. Uh, so we talk about the beginner's level, but it really isn't quite a beginner's level. We do expect our students to have some previous experience in art, whether that be A levels or high school or something similar. Uh, it is important that you've tried to do something before and that it's not the first, first ever time you touch a, a piece of paper and a paintbrush. Um, if students already have previous, say a foundation program in, in studio arts, they can apply directly for the certificate. We also require a certain knowledge of recent art history for students who go straight to the second year. And students who go straight to the third year, which does happen quite rarely, 
uh, are students who've already had university level studies in arts, in fine arts, okay? Um, mm -mm. And, okay. Um, then we have uh, the space and facilities. So Metaphors, as I said in the beginning, it's in an old industrial space. It's a factory. Uh, it's one of these spaces that are being torn down and ours has miraculously survived. Um, it's in the area called Sants in Barcelona. It's about 10 minutes in the metro from the center. Uh, for American students, we always say that Barcelona is a tiny city, but I guess that in comparison to Copenhagen or other cities in Denmark, it's a big city, but uh, um, we're in the area of Sands, which is a relatively quiet neighborhood, um, not very touristy, which is, which is nice for us. Um, each student gets their own individual studio space, kind of a small cubicle, um, and if they need to work in larger spaces, we have several project rooms that they can uh, they can ask for and book uh, on a week, I believe. Uh, and there's access to the studios from nine o'clock in the morning to um, 11 o'clock in the evening, every, every day, including the weekends too. Um, I'm including here the tool room, the fact that there's a tool room because it's one of these things that makes the space quite, uh, quite special that, that students have access to these tools. Um, and then, okay, uh, the three-year program uh, is scheduled, wait, someone is, uh, I'll just enter this person, okay. Um, the program, uh, it has several core components. Uh, one of them, I know that Zoe uh, will be talking about it when she joins us in a while. Um, the core, one of the, 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 the core com components is the, the classes in tools and techniques. And it's perhaps that which most students can most easily um, kind of identify with when they look at a school program. Okay, so you teach painting, you teach sculpture, there's photography, video, we teach printmaking, but there are also other classes like the ones that Michael teaches that he will be talking a little bit about. We're going to do one in, on fictional writing uh, this autumn. Uh, we do classes on site-specific art and performance. Well, different, different disciplines are covered in tools and techniques and, and workshops. Um, but we, we don't only believe in uh, teaching techniques. Uh, for us, uh, there are lots of other uh, important components of, a, of, a, of an art student's uh, training. And one of them are the weekly tutorials. Uh, Michael will also be talking about that in a moment. Uh, and the presentations at the end of each block. So the, the academic year is, uh, is, is constructed in six blocks of six weeks, uh, two in the autumn semester and four in the winter spring semester. And at the end of each of these blocks, students are presenting their individual studio uh, work uh, that they have been supervised with during their tutorials. So apart from the tools and techniques classes, we expect that all students have an individual um, studio practice, uh, afternoons, evenings, or also days when you have no class because the, the tools and technique classes are optional. Uh, we normally actually recommend students not to take all the classes, simply to have time for individual studio work. Um, students have a chance to show work in both in the, the open studio exhibitions that we have at Metapra, but also in gallery exhibitions around the city. I'm going to be talking a little bit more about that in a moment. And now comes a little bit, just a very brief uh, description of the difference between some of the classes of uh, the foundation program, uh, which is the first year. Uh, these students have a weekly session of recent art history. We try to cover the, um, the movements in contemporary art from the 1970s up to the current day. Also, sometimes we have to visit kind of back to Marcel Duchamp, et cetera. 
um, it's very important for us to feel that our students understand what is going uh, on around them, that they can go into a, a, a contemporary art museum and, and understand what they see. Uh, Students on the second, third year, where Mike, Michael is largely a teacher at the moment, uh, have other uh, weekly sessions of critical theory, which we could say it could be the big brother of recent art history, uh, often with a more philosophical stance than, than the recent art history. Uh, we have a class called Debate and Assignment, which is somewhere between um, a theoretical class and a practical class or a workshop. Uh, these are kind of um, classes that are meant to make students reflect and of course debate as the name indicates. Uh, and it's about producing work and talking about it. And the, the second, third year students also have one weekly specific workshop or a project, um, which again, Michael can talk a little bit about. He's been teaching some of them. Uh, to give you an idea, we have an upcoming um, installation and sound workshop. Uh, we have a, a project about curatorial practice for second, third year students. So these, these could be just a, a couple of examples of this. We can talk a little bit about them uh, later. Um, the second, third year students also present small academic papers each year. Um, and um, we have specific exhibitions for second, third year students that are more reduced number than the exhibitions that I'll be talking about in a moment that are open to all students. And actually here it comes. So um, two to three times, actually sometimes more, um, uh, we organize exhibitions in galleries around the city. Um, we, we use two or three uh, different venues. Um, and the idea for all these exhibitions is that we, uh, we normally will organize an open call. Students can apply to be part of the exhibition. Uh, one of the tutors will be in charge for organizing and hanging the show, et cetera. And it's a great opportunity to try and be part of a real exhibition. So, um, uh, this is something we very much recommend to everyone. But we also at the same time expect that our students go to the gallery openings and events in the galleries in Barcelona. So one thing is showing your work, but other, another thing is being an active uh, visitor uh, in all the exhibitions. And it's something that we, we enjoy very much. We think it's fun. Uh, our students do too, uh, but it's, it's, it's an important part of any art student's education. Um, the, in the same way, we try, the further students get into the program, into the second and into the third year, we try and help them connect with artists and, and curators and gallerists uh, to get to know the, the art world here, uh, because it's, it, it's important for us to know that once our students leave uh, Metaphora, they will uh, understand what the art world is and whether they stay in Barcelona or they go back to their countries, uh, they, will, they will know how to approach a gallery. They will know how to you know, figure out what's happening. Um, so this is also something we try and teach at Metaphora. Okay, and I'm almost there. Um, the third year students uh, have a, a two very specific things uh, that make them different from the first and second year students. Uh, one of them is that the past, the last months of the, of the third year, we find um, an external tutor to supplement the work of the in-house tutor. So Michael is an in-house tutor, uh, someone who sees the students uh, at Metaphora, uh, yes, so yeah, that's nice. Um, someone who sees the students at Metaphora every week. But during the last part of the third year, this is supplemented with someone external. Uh, and actually, we're very happy because Zoe has a really nice external tutor on the last part of her third year. Uh, perhaps we can talk about that in a moment. 
um, the, the external tutors are either practicing artists or curators or gallerists, uh, any kind of you can call them cultural agents, uh, etc. The third year students end their stay at Medafra with uh, writing a small decina, uh, a thesis, which is not as long as a PhD, uh, of course. Uh, it's an extended uh, artistic statement. Uh, and uh, we, we kind of finish their stay uh, after the three years with two events. One of them is that they get to show their decina to present it publicly. Um, we're super happy to be able to collaborate with MACBA, which is the Museum of Contemporary Art in Barcelona. And uh, this year, what we did was one event where they presented at MACBA and right across the street, we have the pleasure to be able to work with Angels Barcelona, which is one of Barcelona's, I think, nicest galleries, uh, who, who lends us their space for this particular event. So, um, that's basically the end of the third year, and it's it's really nice. We feel that we 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 managed to come out with professional artists who are ready to kind of hit the round hit the ground running in the art world, and who already know how to move around. And that is definitely one of our main objectives uh, in Barcelona: helping helping artists uh, helping our students to become uh, professional artists. So here's Arash, but uh, actually the one who's going to be talking is Michael. <laughs> um, so before giving the word to um, to Michael, perhaps we could just say hello to Zoe. Are you there? There she is. Hey, Hi. Zoe. Hi. Um, so Zoe is joining us, as I already uh, explained in the beginning of the session. Um, but let's hear just briefly first, Michael, uh, give a bit of a, you know, just a, an impression of what a, what a, what an in-house tutor does, and also, of course, in his case, the particular classes that he teaches. So, uh, Michael, I'll let you, uh, I'll let you talk. Okay. Um, hello. Um, so yeah, I am a, a tutor at the moment. I have students on from TP1 and TP3. I think there's none in the middle, but perhaps there will next year as, as the TP1 students TP, advance. TP um, is the training program. <laughs> ah, yes, sorry. Sorry, yes. That's uh, our intern slang. Yeah, <laughs> institutional jargon. Um, and as a tutor, I meet them, everybody, uh, normally at least once a week. Sometimes more often uh, we have one week, we'll have an individual tutorial and I'll spend 30 minutes in a student's studio talking them about their work, what they want to do with their work, um, reflecting on what they've made since I've last seen them. And then on the other weeks we have a group tutorial where um, we all meet, the five or six or seven of us, if you include me, meet in a room and, and the students work and issues that they have and we discuss it um, as a group, which I think is really useful to get peer feedback feedback on what a student is making as well as just feedback from myself. Um, that's the way it works. I mean, like any issues, I guess, that this might have, I, they would, some, if they're to do with their work, they'd, they'd maybe come to me before anybody else. If they're more specifically related to living in Barcelona, I imagine they'd go to the to the admin staff or just itself. Um, but that works, it's, and it's, it's useful because when we get to the end of the Box. Um, as Jette said, we have, the students do a presentation. The the tutors uh, tend to know more than anybody else, <laughs> other than the students. Maybe one or two of us exactly what the students' goals were. So that it, and it helps give feedback, a filter. So all the fact that the student might get can be kind of um, the tutor can help them evaluate that this feedback in light to what they want to do with their artwork, which the tutor should know. Um, as a teacher, I teach a number of different courses, actually, uh, a theory core class, a couple of theory classes next year, and specific um, workshops in painting and in writing. I think that the way I understand the workshop classes working, these are um, sort of reflect trends, I guess, in contemporary art. For instance, there is a real trend in fiction writing at the moment, in mo if you go to a an exhibition in the contemporary art gallery, some fiction will be mentioned or involved in the press release 
and the press release will be a work of fiction. Um, and this happens to be my specialism um, because of, of, of my PhD, so I feel I can teach that. Um, and likewise, I make painting, so I teach painting. And this is operates much. I have students who I, who aren't my tutees, who aren't in my tutorial group, so I'll see them, um, and that this works differently. We we I do a presentation at the beginning of the four week block, and then we work on a project. And then also, I mean, projects I don't work on like site specific and the sound art. Like again, these are sort of good because it gives the students on a chance to try different things while sort of like the paths that they go like on one side they're trying new things in workshops maybe I have a student who doesn't write so they're going to be writing and but in their tutorial group they're producing a work that's not not been done for class there's like two channels I suppose that the student has for making their work um and I mean just about the difference between T1 and the, I'm sorry the first year and the other two years is that when the first years are doing their presentations there's a Oops. Ah, Michael, we lost you. Mm -mm. I wasn't sure whether it was my, um, whether it was mine or, or Michael's connection. That was not quite. Oh, let's see if he comes back. Hmm. He's probably still talking without realizing it. <laughs> Listen, uh, while Mike, Michael reconnects, uh, Zoe, why don't we, uh, We, I mean, I think he's, he's already covered, so you know, he, he left the session. Um, while uh, while Mike, Michael reconnects, uh, perhaps Zoe, you can talk a little bit about your uh, experience. I was just saying in the beginning that many of yours and Michael's uh, kind of explanation, we will be covering pretty much uh, most of the, most of the, um, uh, of the issues here. So I'm, I'm saying Michael is, is writing me a message on the phone saying, oh, I'm trying to reconnect. Hello, I'm sorry, you, am I back? Can you see me? Uh Whenever Michael comes back in, it seems like Yetta cuts out, so. Oh, mine is also <laughs> failing. Are you okay? Can you hear me now, Zoe? Yeah, I can hear you, but now Michael's gone. Yeah, Michael is reconnecting. But why don't you just tell us a little bit? There's Michael back. Hi, Michael. Hello, sorry. Yeah. My, my connection was also just... <laughs> Anyway, I was just saying that while you were reconnecting that we could let uh, Zoe uh, explain a little bit about her experience, but I don't know if now that you're back, if you want to uh, wrap up. I don't know what, I don't know what point I got cut off, but I, I'm just um, saying, yeah, the difference between the first years and the second and third years is how the students develop a discourse. It's not just about developing practical skills is about it is developing the ability to talk about and present the work that you make I think that's a really important mm -hmm. difference between the, the the beginning and the end you know students when they get to third year they're no longer saying oh it's whatever anybody wants to find in it is they're telling us what they think that, um, that they, the work should contain um, mm -hmm. and it's really exciting yeah. to watch people make that development during that time of metaphor okay, okay. okay. Yeah. in case I get cut off <laughs> Zoe, over to you. Um, okay, hello. Um, I started at Metafora um, on the fast track because I have already gotten a BFA in art education. So I had some experience in the, the art world. Um, and so my experience starts in the training program too. Um, and I'd say the the it is kind of like two different um um let's see so there's it's what michael said before there's your own studio practice um and what you're interested in and then there's also the classes um the technique classes and the um 
the theory classes. And so for me, um, I feel like my own studio practice does go in line with the theory and technical classes, but I also have my own discourse going that I've been developing for since I, I started here, maybe a little bit before too. Um, and the, the one thing that I wanted to say about this making your own artwork is sometimes if you're uninspired or don't know what your discourse is yet that the the technique classes and the theory classes are really good for sparking ideas um especially in in Michael's painting classes for me personally it uh created a lot of um inspiration uh for making artwork and ideas for making art about um let's see the so the school is very comfortable um there's studios all over the place. There's a few common areas that are really nice to meet up with people and talk between classes or before classes. Um, and then the big hall is also great for all of our classes to get fit everybody in there, especially through the COVID times to have uh, enough space between us to feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Let's see, the individual tutorials and group tutorials are really good for, um, exploring ideas with your tutor and with your uh, peers, um, getting feedback, as Michael said, and one-on-one -on -one instruction as well. If you're not sure what, which direction to go into, the tutor can be really helpful for showing other artists who are working with similar ideas or um, just advice of what materials you should be using. Um, and if you don't know anything about um, art materials, you have all of the technique and um, Oriol and, and Piotr to show you the, the way to do things. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I don't know if there's any other thing that I should talk about or if we I open don't, uh, questions. I don't remember at, at what point you entered the session, Zoe, but I was precisely um, going over what happens at the end of the third year and mm. the case is that now you're on the third year and we've just uh, found your external tutor. We're in this process right now where we're, we're contacting potential external tutors for, for our third year students and we're super happy that you'll be, you'll be working with a, a quite young but recognized painter uh, that I know whose work I know you admire and love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's yeah. that going to be like? What are you expecting from your collaboration? Um, her, her name is Mercedes Magrané. Yeah, so I've had a tutorial with Mercedes and we had an artist talk with her. Um, so that was um, some a beginning to our relationship um, at Metafora and I really appreciated her input and the connection connections that she made between my work, all of my own work and the connections there and also connections to other artists. Um, I am really looking forward to asking her technical questions um, because her paintings are just gorgeous. The material is so pure um, and that's something that I want to uh, pull into my painting. Um, pure, not as in like innocent or anything like that, but like pure, like really nice um, application, I suppose. Um, and I think asking her questions about how she got into these gallery spaces, um, what what ways would be best to get myself out there because that's something that I want to do in Barcelona is show my work and um, meet other people and be a part of the conversation. Um, so yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Zoe. Uh, oh, and then also preparing the the Cecina as well with her. Um, and I'm sure with Michael too and with Ruben, um, him being the uh, the editor or the, I don't know, overseer of our um, writing for the project. Your writing, right. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, I know that Nuria was here with us, wanted to ask us about theater and the mixture between art therapy and art. Is that right, Nuria? Yes, you are, you are right. Um, I think that, that this uh, studio is, uh, 
only about arts, plastic arts, or visual, sculptural, these things, and not theater. But um, as you said before, I give you the idea <laughs> because I think this school is yeah. very good. I mean, we work and with all... performance, and sometimes we have even had uh -huh. uh, choreographers come in, but it's, it's always from the visual arts kind of uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. Theater as such, yeah. we can work with, yes. Perhaps Michael, since he's uh -huh. the, uh, specialized in fictional writing, we could introduce some theater, create a new trend. Uh, yeah, I think that would be the, uh, the, the limits of my expertise, really. I'm not. Um, well, yeah, I'm, I mean, there is definitely an overlap. There was a show, or oh, a show I saw in uh, Centro, Centro in Cibeles in Madrid which had a definite like scenography and theater influence. I mean, art is, uh, contemporary art is like a magpie. It just takes all the bits it likes from other parts of culture and, 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 and uses them to, to feather its own nest, uh, so to speak. But yeah, but I mean, I think it'd be a push to say that I could teach theater design. Oh, of course. <laughs> uh, you were also- Sorry. Sorry. No, it's just, uh to make sure that I understand everything because I think that uh, you can uh, you can uh, learn for for um, for a year for example and not is necessary to do the three courses is right this yes 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 you can be here for a year the shortest stay you can be is for six weeks um, mm -hmm. I would say that the majority of students spend a year and uh, there's a, a, a smaller proportion of the students who then end up going into the second year and into the third year. Um, so yes. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you wanted to know a little bit about the, 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 the bridge between the art therapy courses and the studio arts courses? Is that right? Uh, yes. Uh, in fact, I, I psychologist. Okay, and uh, I do um, training in different competencies, soft competencies like uh, emotional education and these things. And now I try to explore uh, this this world of the arts right. uh, to to combine with uh, this uh, psychologist therapy. And uh, and I ask just asking uh, uh, to this school and others. <laughs> We do have an art therapy department at Metaphora and you can contact them for more information. They run both courses in Spanish and in English, but at the studio arts department, we have a course that we run two times every year, uh, mm -hmm. once in the autumn and once in the spring, which is a six week stay, uh, which is the normal uh, studio arts classes. So students mm -hmm. join the course for six weeks, but Every afternoon, they also have an art therapy class. So it's like an, 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 a kind of an extra module that we teach twice a year, which is an introduction to art therapy. Uh, we call that course Art and Process. But again, if you're interested at all, we can send you links and stuff, so. Okay, sounds good. All right. Okay. Um, and this is Lawrence, our turtle. And here is our email address. Uh, if you need to contact us and ask us any further questions. So I think we should just leave it here unless uh, Zoe, Michael, Nuria, you wanna say anything else? Uh, I think that's about it. Right, okay. Well, very nice to meet you and uh, I hope to see you soon. So, and thank, thank you. you for coming. Thank you, Michael, and thank you, Zoe. Okay, all right. Bye-bye.